Get your hands off your joystick and jump with the G-Spot. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Find the G-Spot tonight starting at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. This portion of G4 is brought to you by T-Mobile to go. Get more prepaid minutes without hidden fees or contracts. This is it. X-Play presents our Best of 2004 award show. Glamour, glitter, fashion, and fame. Ooh, it's excitement. What will win Game of the Year? Find out. It's Tuxedo Time. Coming to you not live from a soundstage in beautiful Los Angeles, California, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Ladies, gentlemen, people dressed up as orcs. Welcome to X-Play's Best of 2004 Awards Show. Every year we play hundreds of games, and every year a few of those games stand like mighty colossi above all the others. And in 2004 we were wowed by title after title. It made the competition for best game of the year truly epic. 2004 saw the long-awaited return of several huge game franchises with the release of Halo 2, Doom 3, GTA San Andreas, and Half-Life 2. We also saw innovative new titles like Fable, Katamari Damashi, Far Cry, and PsyOps. And now, as we lay 2004 to rest, we celebrate the games that made up for all the times we had to play crap. Like Catwoman. Or the guy game. Or Barbie Horse Adventure. And what better to take your mind off Barbie and her horse adventure than the nominees for Best Action Adventure Game of 2004. The nominees for Best Action Adventure Game are Prince of Persia, Warrior Within. Metroid Prime 2, Echoes. Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. Ninja Gaiden. Splinter Cell. Pandora tomorrow. And the winner is Ninja Gaiden. The only thing you can be of two minds about with Ninja Gaiden is how to pronounce the title. Otherwise, this is a watertight, vacuum sealed crucible of gaming prowess that is in a league of its own. Well, it may look like you only Julianne Nippon's natives into an endless array of flesh confetti. Ninja Gaiden deftly avoids redundancy with a control scheme that requires masterly finesse to handle the wicked challenges. The game gets more interesting as you get better. Taking its gaming heritage to create something at once familiar in style, but incomparable in execution, Ninja Gaiden is action at its finest. How can we not love a ninja who looks so good in purple? It's true. You have to respect a man who seems deadly in a mulberry tunic. Of course, while the average gamer might be overwhelmed by Ninja Gaiden's level of difficulty, they'll find a far different skill set necessary to beat games in our next category. If speed is what you crave, then look no further than our car-crashing, gravity-defying nominees for Best Racing Game of 2004. The nominees for Best Racing Game are Burnout 3. Need for Speed Underground 2. iToy Anti-Grab. OutRun 2. Rally Sport Challenge 2. And the winner is... Burnout 3. It's not the game you take home to mom, but Burnout 3 is the game you tell all your buddies about in the morning. A devious mixture of contempt and competence, Burnout 3 requires a great deal of driving skill, but sweetens the deal by indulging a universal fantasy of destruction with such exuberance, you have to be a loyal Pacifica radio listener not to feel like a blossoming freshman of amorality. Immediately enjoyable to the casual and committed, just as fun to play as to watch, Burnout 3 liberates racing from the tyranny of realism. It's not just great driving, it's a great game. If there was one gaming genre this year where we encouraged renting over buying, it was fighting games. In 2003, we had fighting juggernauts like Soul Calibur 2 and Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution. In 2004, not so much. Though we were faced with slim pickings, we still found five nominees to battle for the heavyweight crown we call Best Fighting Game of 2004. 
The nominees for Best Fighting Game are Guilty Gear X2 Sharp Reload, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3, Def Jam Fight for New York, Mortal Kombat Deception, Dead or Alive Ultimate. And the winner is Def Jam Fight for New York. Def Jam Fight for New York finally makes the fighting game what it always should have been, visceral. The game just plain hurts. An astounding synergy of visual and oral craftsmanship, no fighting game has come as close to making you feel your avatar's pain. And motivating you to do your best to dole it out double. A simplified fighting interface drives the action more from instinct than memorization, but you still need to keep your eye on the opponent. All of your button mashing can mean jack with one good counter. Extra RPG elements, ladles of hip hop, and this is the kick in the balls the genre's been looking for. It's hard not to revel in the gratuitous beatdowns of Def Jam Fight for New York. And while it won't be winning any NAACP awards, we're happy to give it X Play's seal of approval. Stick around. When we return, we have an award for people who love being addicted to Evercrack. Best massively multiplayer online RPG of the year. Coming up, the award for best platformer and best RPG of the year. <laughs> Once again, marginal celebrities Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X Play's Best of 2004 Awards. Today we come together to celebrate the games that made 2004 a cornucopia of rich chocolatey violence, smooth, creamy racing, and delicious but bloating role-playing games. But amid all the hacking, slashing, and depravity, were the platformers games that harken back to a more innocent time. Games where you were more likely to dodge spikes than shove them through someone's head. This year we saw great platformers that unlocked the childlike wonder in all of us. Here are the platformers that made us jump for joy in 2004. The nominees for best platformer are Sly 2 Band of Thieves, Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal, Jack 3, Maximo versus the Army of Zin. Astro Boy, the Omega Factor. And the winner is... Ratchet and Clank, up your arsenal. If Ratchet and Clank going commando was as good as sex, then someone just improved sex. Because up your arsenals, just playing better. The genius of Ratchet and Clank has always been simple controls elegantly blended with an amazing variety of both weapons and gameplay. Up Your Arsenal's gaming booyah base is executed with a shocking command of difficulty pacing and that stuff that makes games fun. A fine-tuning of the artificial intelligence, an emphasis on strategic thinking, and the preposterous storyline all reward the devotee to the series but prove that platforming is in good hands well into the future. I'm happy I live in a world where a space cat and his tiny robotic life partner can win a major award. And I'm happy that I don't have to play many RPGs. Yes, RPGs or role-playing games for the layman. They can be long, painful exercises in leveling up. Or they can completely immerse you in another world. To be honest, if you asked us a year ago, we'd have told you Fable, with all its promise innovations, would win the best RPG award, hands down. Then, we played it. And let's just say the field is wide open. Here's the award for Best RPG of 2004. The nominees for RPG of the Year are Shin Megami Tensei, Nocturne. Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic II, The Sith Lords. Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. Shadow Hearts, Covenant. Tales of Symphonia. Blame your fate. And the winner is... Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne is weird, like Ken Russell on window panes weird. That's why we love it so. Even though it hasn't reinvented the traditional Japanese turn-based RPG, Nocturne sure makes it look all new and exciting by putting the creativity where it was sorely needed, the story. It's an apocalyptic horror nightmare sex creature free-for-all. The gameplay is solid all the way through, 
but it's justified by a desire to further investigate one truly original vision. It may not revitalize RPGs, but this brief respite reminds us what the appeal was in the first place. Of course, for some people, RPGs aren't enough. They need more letters in their acronyms. And for those people, we have MMO RPGs. Yes, massively multiplayer, online, role, playing, games. I am so tired of saying that. From Jedis to superheroes to elves, the MMORPGs of 2004 have something for every genus of nerd. The nominees for Massively Multiplayer Game are City of Heroes, Star Wars Galaxies Jump to Lightspeed, Anarchy Online Alien Invasion, EverQuest 2, World of Warcraft. And the winner is World of Warcraft. It's easy to say 600,000 people can't be wrong, but look at no-carb dieting. World of Warcraft's achievements are numerous. It looks so good, you can just play as a diminutive tourist with an axe. People with lives can find statistical satisfaction from only an hour's worth of play. The interface is so streamlined that the action stays taut and exciting. It's the game you wanted every time you sat down to play any other MMO. This is a hallmark of developer Blizzard style. The game is well thought out, has exquisite presentation, and it's made for everyone. Will you stop touching me? Like the Spartacus of gaming, they've liberated the MMO for us all. <laughs> no other game has so completely earned World of Warcraft's abbreviated title, WoW. And while the soggy servers are keeping us away from our bunny-killing obsessions with WoW, we still can't help loving it. I would honestly like to be leveling up right now. My troll gets testy when he can't kill nature. There's a PC behind the soot. Yeah. Up next, best shooter, best strategy game, and best sports game of the year. Hey, what? Once again, two people who actually dressed up for this. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. This is a major award show, you can tell, by the lavish production values. Welcome back to X Plays Best of 2004 show. We're looking back at the year's best games, from fighters... To racers. ...to the one award to rule them all. Best game of 2004. But first, we have one of the biggest categories of the year, the shooters. It's such a heated race for best shooter this year that the category is remarkable, not for the games we included, for the games we had to exclude. For example, a little existential title from id Software that proves hell is other people on Mars. Here are our controversial contenders for best shooter of 2004. The nominees for shooter of the year are Half-Life 2, Halo 2, The Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay, Unreal Tournament 2004, Far Cry. And the winner is Half-Life 2. Not so much a surprise as a great relief. Half-Life 2 has more than lived up to its esteemed pedigree. It's surpassed it. Simply put, Half-Life 2's a masterpiece of both technology and design. The outdoor levels are sun-dappled vistas of extraterrestrial totalitarianism. Plus, Everything is possessed by that visually rewarding facet of science we like to call physics. But, like its predecessor, it's the game that draws you in, with gameplay variety throughout and that pervading sense of dread that finds its zenith in Ravenholm, a good case to invest in adult undergarments. Worth the wait in every way. Just don't take six years ever again. The only downside of Half-Life 2 is not having a computer powerful enough to keep up with Valve's programming prowess. If you ever needed a reason to buy that Alienware or Falcon PC you've been dreaming of, Half-Life 2 is it. And if you haven't got the money for that investment, maybe it's time to strategize a way to get it. Which brings us to our next category. I promise that is the worst transition we'll use all show. Promises were made be broken. So is your nose. I'm kidding. Here's the award for Best Strategy Game of 2004. You just threatened my nose. The nominees for Best Strategy Game are Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle-Earth, Sid Meier's Pirates, 
Rome, Total War. Full Spectrum Warrior. Pikmin 2. And the winner is... Rome, Total War. While it may lack the wedding gifts and senators' wives of Guccione's classic, Rome Total War has everything else needed for the budding Caligula. An astounding melding of turn-based and real-time strategy where neither element is short-shrifted. Rome Total War is in a league of its own with its amazing historical detail, especially in battles that truly realize the Powell Doctrine. Well, kind of. While the options in the game may seem overwhelming, you can automate the game to play at your level of anality. Rome Total War is rewarding over months or just hours. But be careful, you just may learn something. How can we resist a game so good the History Channel actually uses it to recreate epic battles? That was putting hundreds of our fellow actors out of work. Hang low your tunics, extras. And while actors have it rough, athletes have it pretty good. Since 2004 brought us dozens of sports games, some of which we kind of enjoyed. Yes, while it wasn't an innovative year for sports, we did see some old favorites return. Which was the best? Find out now. The nominees for best sports game are ESPN NFL 2K5, Madden NFL 2005, Fight Night, Mario Power Tennis, World Soccer winning 11-7 International. And the winner is World Soccer winning 11-7 International. The soccer game with the funny name just so happens to be the year's best sports title. World Soccer winning 11-7 International takes the crown because it did what no other sports game did last year. It improves in every respect on the prior year's release. Considering the majority of sports games are like Buick, in a rut since the 16-bit days, that's no small accomplishment. Superb animation, rock-solid goalie AI, thousands of photorealistic players, and ball physics that eliminate the invisible rubber band found in most footy titles elevate winning 11-7 to the World Cup champ of sports games for 2004. Yes, we gave a soccer game the best sports game of 2004 award. Pigs are flying and hell has frozen over. And up next, most original game of 2004 and our biggest award of the show. I wonder if you can ice skate in a frozen hell. Coming up, this is it. Which one will be game of the year? And now, the moment you've been waiting for. Oh, and also Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play's Best of 2004 Awards. Every year we pick the best shooters, racers, fighters, and RPGs of the year. These are games we love, games we treasure, games we fight over. But this year we have a brand new category that we find pretty important. Yeah, so wash in a sea of sequels, we're always thrilled when someone breaks the mold and does something new, something unique, or something different. And that's why we're honored to present X-Play's first award for most original game of 2004. The nominees for most original game are Katamari Damashi, Feel the Magic XXXY, Donkey Konga, PsyOps The Mind Gate Conspiracy, Silent Storm. And the winner is Katamari Damashi. Katamari Damashi is one part unique concept a billion parts unbridled madness from the adorable end of the crazy pool. Although the concept of rolling up everything in your path without any regard for personal property or personal safety does have a Sisyphean determination about it, the damn thing is just so huggable. Playing Katamari Damashi is a compulsive and unique experience that just has no comparison. No one believes it until they sit down and spend some time in its chromatic insanity of collection. That's why we consider it Pretty original. I'll have whatever the Katamari programmer is having. And that would be illegal. We've come at last to the biggest award of 2004. The moment everyone has been waiting for. Last year, we gave best game of 2003 to Knights of the Old Republic, an RPG that brought out the dark side in all of us. This year, there's an Aryan RPG nominee in sight, and the competition is fierce. So here it is, the big one, best game of 2004.
The nominees for X-Play's best game of 2004 are Half-Life 2, Halo 2, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Ninja Gaiden, Ratchet and Clank, Up Your Arsenal. And the winner is <gasps> Halo 2. For us, sitting down to play Halo 2 was like returning to the warm embrace of an affair soaked in explosive plasma. Single player returns to the no sleep for the weary onslaught of action that won us over three years ago. Tightening the screws on every aspect, it's a leaner, meaner game we'll be playing until number three. But never have the skills of single player been put to such good use in multiplayer as they are here. New vehicles, jacking those vehicles, and dual wielding all work to make this head and shoulders above the console multiplayer that came before it. Halo 2 is a total package of masterful game design, and it's damn fun to boot. That simple arithmetic makes it Game of the Year. Well, those were our best games of 2004. Now, you're sure to disagree with all of our choices, but you can post your favorites on our message boards. Which you're probably already doing right now. Now, if you forgot what we just said for the past half hour, you can find all the nominees and winners on our website which is g4techtv.com slash xplay. Yes. Oh, I have to go back and turn this into the I, guy who's... I, I gotta I, return My pants address. already are falling off. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I see you out there. Still trying to be fly with that 10-year-old cassette player? Come on, dog. Join us in the 21st century. How does a $20,000 interior car makeover sound to you? Watch G4 for clues every night from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Then go to G4TV.com to enter the Whipset Sweepstakes. Four new clues drop every night. The more you watch, the more chances you have to win. Please believe it's the Whipset Sweepstakes, May 8th through May 21st. I hate Adam Sessler. This game is horrendous. Why does he get to spend every day with Morgan Webb? We've got a preview of the hottest new releases. Yeah! Watch X-Play with Adam and Morgan next.